Hello chemists and welcome back to Bell's Chemistry. In this episode we're going to take an in-depth look at how to complete calculations relating to the movement of ions inside the mass spectrometer. This could be their velocity, their mass, kinetic energy or how long they'll take to get down the flight tube. This is AQA topic 1.1 and is on paper one of your exams. Whilst we're talking exams, these calculations have become a favourite of examiners since they were introduced when the specification changed in 2016. So don't forget to watch right to the end where I give you the five key points for your revision. And if you just discovered the channel, consider subscribing for a new A-level chemistry video each week. Let's start by taking a quick recap of the mass spectrometer. Atoms are added to the mass spectrometer and ionized. These ions are then accelerated before traveling down the flight tube to arrive at the detector. It's really important that you can describe each stage and how it works. And for more detail, there's a link at the top of the screen right now. The most important thing to the calculations we're looking at today in this episode is the kinetic energy and the distance of the ion drift or the flight tube. These are constants or fixed values in the calculation and don't change even when considering different ions or isotopes. Knowing that kinetic energy is constant for all ions in the mass spectrometer, we can calculate the kinetic energy using the equation Ke equals a half mv squared, making sure that we use mass in kilograms and velocity in meters per second. The distance of the ion drift or the flight tube is also a constant and we can use the equation velocity equals distance divided by time to calculate the distance the ion travels or the time it will take to reach the detector. You'll have come across both these equations in your GCSE physics. When using the equation for kinetic energy we need to be able to calculate the mass of one atom or ion. The mass of one mole of atoms can be found on the periodic table as a relative atomic mass and every mole contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms. This is Avogadro's constant. So if you divide the relative atomic mass by Avogadro's constant, then you have the mass of one atom in grams. But we're gonna be using that mass in the kinetic energy equation, which if you remember, needs the mass to be in kilograms. So we divide our mass by a thousand to convert it. So if you want to work out the mass of an ion of chlorine 35, you must first divide the relative atomic mass of 35 by Avogadro's constant, and then divide it by a thousand to convert it to kilograms. There are three levels of questions which are likely to come across during your A-level studies and of course your final exams. Very simple questions just involve the use of the kinetic energy equation which is given to you in the exam. You're most likely to see these questions in classwork as preparations to tackle the more complex questions. The second level of questions involves using the kinetic energy equation and the equation for velocity. These make a regular appearance on AS exam papers and can be solved in two different ways. The final and the most complex type involves comparing two different isotopes. Usually you're given the time it takes for one isotope to reach the detector, but then must calculate the time it will take for the second isotope to reach the detector. Unsurprisingly, these are the more common exam questions at A-level. Starting with our simplest of calculations, we're going to use the kinetic energy equation. This will allow us to calculate the kinetic energy of an ion in the mass spectrometer. This can be rearranged to calculate its mass and to calculate velocity. This equation is always given in an exam when you need to use it, but it's not always given in the arrangement that you need to complete the calculation. So it's worth practicing or learning the rearrangements. We'll look at an example calculation where we're asked to calculate the velocity of an ion of magnesium 24 when it's given 4.53 times 10 to the minus 15 joules of kinetic energy. Now the first thing we're gonna do is calculate the mass of a single ion. To do this, we'll do the relative atomic mass divided by Avogadro's constant. And then we'll convert to kilograms for use in the kinetic energy equation. Once we have that, we'll take the correct arrangement of the kinetic energy formula to calculate the velocity of the ion as 4.77 times 10 to the power of five meters per second. The second type of question is more complex and involves using both the kinetic energy equation and the equation for velocity. In this example, we're given the relative atomic mass, the kinetic energy, and now the distance of the flight tube. We'll first calculate the mass of the ion using the method described earlier, and then we'll calculate the velocity of the ion. This is the same process we just looked at and involves the rearrangement of the kinetic energy equation. And finally, we'll use the equation for velocity rearranged to allow us to calculate the time from the distance given in the question. For some calculations, it can make it easier to combine together these two equations. You can replace the V for velocity in the kinetic energy equation with D over T. Remembering velocity is squared in the kinetic energy equation, so put it in brackets to the power of two. We can simplify it further by multiplying out the brackets to have d squared over t squared. In the third type of example, which is the most complex but also the most common exam question, we need to compare information about two ions in the mass spectrometer. It's useful to know how to combine the two equations we've been working with to make the calculation simple. 
You don't need to remember the proof, but just the final equations. To start off, we're going to split the screen up into isotope 1 and isotope 2. We know how to calculate the kinetic energy, and here we're using the combined equations we just made. Every ion in the mass spectrometer is given the same kinetic energy. Knowing this means we can make both equations equal to each other. The distance and the 1 over 2 appear on both sides of the equation. These are now shown in blue. We can cancel these terms to simplify our calculation. This leaves us with the mass of iron 1 divided by the time taken for iron 1 squared, equaling the mass of iron 2 divided by the time taken for iron 2 squared. I've made them different colours here to make sure it's simple to see that they are different values. It's worth considering the calculations to arrive at the mass of each ion. The mass of each ion is calculated by taking the relative atomic mass and dividing it by Avogadro's constant and then converting it to kilograms. And this would be the same on both sides, you can skip this step and just use their relative atomic masses. To look at this example then, an ion of lithium-6 takes 6.43 times 10 to the minus 5 seconds to travel down the flight tube, and we're asked to calculate how long it will take an ion of lithium-7 to reach the same detector. We'll start off by bringing that equation through from before. I've left the masses in here rather than the relative atomic masses, as it's easier to learn and remember. We'll then rearrange that equation to have t squared as a subject, and then we'll add in a square root to simplify things even further. To make it clear, I've added the 6s and the 7s next to each of the masses and the times so we know when we're talking about lithium-6 ions or when we're talking about lithium-7 ions. We're trying to work out the time taken for a lithium-7 ion to reach the detector. Now we have the rearranged form, all we need to do is plug the numbers in to work out the time taken is 6.95 times 10 to the minus 5 seconds. A relatively simple solution for quite a complex problem. So back to the top then for our five key points for your revision. Kinetic energy and distance are constants inside the mass spectrometer. The equations Ke equals a half mv squared and v equals d over t are given in exams, but it's not always the arrangement that you're going to need for the calculation. So make sure you've either learnt the forms or you know how to get them. Considering the time and distance of a flight tube, we can use Ke equals a half m d squared over t squared, which can make calculations simpler and faster. When we compare the time of two isotopes, we can do m divided by t squared equals m divided by t squared to get a faster and simpler calculation. And finally, in a comparison, you don't need to calculate the mass of an ion because to do that, you do the same process on both sides of the equation, so we can just use the relative atomic masses instead. That's it for this episode of Bale's Chemistry. If you found it useful, why not like and comment below? And thanks for taking the time to watch.